Hey pool players, Ryan here. Welcome once again to the Pool Student Channel and thank you very much for watching everyone. Hey, I'm just getting over COVID, man. I'm about 95% to the good. Oh man, three weeks, that was not, not fun, you guys, for sure. Finally feeling like I want to shoot a little bit. Finally feeling like I want to put together a good video for you guys. And that brings me up to the last video where I asked the question to you as subscribers, do you have any questions as, as to, for me to cover a shot that you guys might be struggling with? So I've got two people that actually made the suggestion. One is Teresa Clark, and Teresa, thanks for that question. Uh, it's about uh, draw, the draw stroke, and I'm gonna be covering that second. But first of all, John Geis, you asked about rail shots. So I've set this, the first shot up here, and you'll notice I have a ball on each side of the table, and I wanna stress this as well. When we're shooting a cut shot, and it's a drill situation, you wanna shoot it from both sides, not just one side, because there's gonna be a difference for you guys, and you'll pick up on that right away. So in this case, <clears throat> I've added a third ball, and that's where I'm gonna to try to gain position to. So I'm gonna to try to draw with low right, come back to the cushion, and kind of roll into that shot line to have this yellow into that corner. This is a great exercise. And once you become proficient at shooting it from both sides of the table, then you're gonna get rid of this ball and you're just gonna play a continuation drill back and forth, shooting that ball in that corner, this ball in that corner, leaving the cue ball where it lies, trying to play that good angle so that you can continue the drill. That's the ultimate part of this and it really will help you pocket this shot. Once again, the shot is frozen to the cushion. A little more difficult when they're frozen to the cushion than if they're just off a little bit because you don't have a lot of margin for error. You've got to hit it really nice and crisp, rail, ball, same time, and you've got to be able to judge squirt because in this case, we're going to put low right and it's going to squirt the cue ball to the left. So we got to make sure we deliver that cue ball to the right spot so we have to compensate for that squirt. That's where I can't help you much more than that than to tell you to just shoot the shot over and over again until it all of a sudden will register in your mind what you have to do in terms of aim when you put together the right amount of speed and spin at the same time. It's all about you performing the shot and getting that feedback so that you can make the adjustment. But at least now we know the drill and how to perform it. Let's see if I can pull it off. Let's see if I can get position back here to this yellow. <clears throat> That's pretty darn good. Got a little cut angle here, but I could easily make that. Little stretch. Now, one of the things I want to say about that shot, this is real critical. When I first started shooting this shot, I missed it a lot. One of the things that I was doing back then and not paying much attention to, pool is a precision game. If you start to line this shot up, and you're up in the air at the, with the back of your cue. Look at how far that is off that cushion. What you're doing there is you can be massing this cue ball so it can be curving, which makes the shot difficult. If you're in the center of the table, like this cue ball is here, keep your cue as low and flat as possible. See how close it is to the cushion back here under my chin? Keep it low, don't raise it up. It'll help you make that shot. The difficulty of the shot is because of the squirt on the cue ball. Once you raise the back of the cue, you've now even made it worse because you're not only giving it more squirt, you're also giving it mass say. So that is critical for this shot. And once you start to shoot it, you're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. Even experiment, raise your cue up and see how much more difficult the shot is for you. Now, once we've shot that and we know we can make that shot over and over again, we're gonna shoot at this direction and do the same thing to gain position. Ultimately, you're gonna to wanna to shoot it like this. Okay, I'm almost out of battery, so I'm gonna shoot just a few shots on this one right here. It's the back and forth, it's a continuation drill, the granddaddy of this shot. 
Top right. Want to try to end up around center table with the cue ball. It's a little bit firm. Not bad though. Gotta watch out for the side pocket. Whew, that's pretty steep now. I need to be up here. You can see it's not an easy drill. Still out of line. One more shot. Very tough right here. Yeah, too tough, it was too thin. Plus I was trying to get back to center, I had to go back and forth, and you can just see. But anyway, I wanted to show you that. That's the drill right there you need to shoot. John, it's gonna help you a lot. Now let's move on to Teresa's drill. This next question I want to answer by Teresa Clark, thank you uh, Teresa for your question, is the draw stroke. And I'm going to just show you the mechanics of the stroke right here. I'm not going to try to make any shot or anything because the mechanics are where it's all at. We first have to all know how to uh, go through the cue ball. So in this case, I'm going to keep the cue ball close to the object ball and that's another Thing I would suggest to those that are new at shooting a draw stroke, don't try to put your cue ball way back here. Get familiar with it up close, and then as you become more and more proficient at it, then you can move your cue ball back and back and back. The longer distance there is between the object ball and the cue ball, the tougher the shot becomes. Now there are a couple things that I focus on a lot when I shoot a draw shot. First and foremost is I want to make sure I'm hitting at the center of the cue ball. I don't want to hit right or left. I want to hit right at the center because that gives me maximum spin at the right portion of the cue ball. If I hit it to one side or the other, I lose energy and I won't get the draw that I would expect to get. So finding center in the cue ball is critical and there's a way you can do that. By just simply looking at the arc at the bottom of the cue ball, you see the arc down there. Put your Q-tip right at the arc and then just raise up and you'll be right on center. And there are other ways to do it as well, but that's a good way to think about it. Now, the other thing too is we don't want to dive into the cue ball. Because sometimes, and I'll, I used to do this, I tried to help the um, cue go through the cue ball to get spin and that'll make us miss cue. You might even pop this ball right over top of your object ball. That happens a lot, happened to me a lot. So you wanna maintain a nice, steady, smooth stroke through the cue ball. So those are the two main things that I think about. Third thing I think about though, is when I do stroke through the cue ball, boom, I follow through. I wanna make sure that I follow through and hold. I don't wanna go through and then recoil back. I wanna go through and hold. Very, very, very critical. Also, chalk. Every time you shoot the shot, put chalk on your cue. Make sure you put the chalk all the way down too, because you're hitting very low in the actual portion of your cue tip that's hitting is the edge, where it almost drops to vertical along the side. So you wanna make sure that you get a nice coating of chalk on your cue uh, tip. So now, step into the shot, good fundamentals. Look at the bottom of the cue ball, make sure you're in the center. Nice and easy, very simple. Now my thing is that I have a tendency because I keep my elbow from dropping is I want to, when I come through and I get past 90, I dive my cue. I dive it, I dive it down. I have a video on that. So that's something that if you are miscuing, it could be because of that. Set up a camera from the side like this and look at your arm. Now, there's some other things I want to talk about as well on this shot. We don't want a firm grip. We want to keep a nice, loose, I really only hold on to about three fingers and a thumb, 
And the three fingers aren't really even holding that tight. Just enough to control the cue, but not enough to grip the cue. Because if we grip the cue, we'll actually take away the stroke action that we need to be able to go through this cue ball. Once again, line up the center. I'm curious to look at this myself because I know I will always dive a little bit. I'm okay if I dive past when I strike my cue ball. If I start diving at the cue ball, that's a big no-no for me. I will miss cue. Gotta pay attention to that. It's always in my mind. Gotta go through the, the cue ball in the, in the initial hit, nice and straight. If it dives after, I'm okay. So pay attention to that for you guys that might miss cue. I'm positive that's gonna be one of the issues because it's very, very common. Okay, so that pretty much covers it. I didn't wanna spend a whole lot of time on that. If you are new to the draw stroke, once again, keep the cue ball and keep the object ball close together. Just work on your mechanics until you're going through the cue ball right. You're getting spin. And also pay attention to the spin. If it's coming straight back, that's good. If it's spinning as it comes back, that means you're hitting one side or the other. If it's spinning clockwise like this, that means you're hitting to the left. If you're hitting counterclockwise, you're hitting to the right. Don't wanna see that. So there's some things, the cue ball does not lie. It will help you pay attention to how it returns when it's spinning back to you. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, well, I hope I've covered some stuff that'll help you guys. I know this is more for the beginner player, but hey, we all start somewhere. And we've got to get our mechanics right. Keep the fundamentals right too, and you're going to be a great player if you keep working at it. Until next time, like I always say, keep on practicing.